Hello and welcome to part 20 of this Kerbal Space Programme 2 for Science video series. So in uh, part 19, as you can see, we came to EVE and we uh, landed this little thing on the surface which is just a very simple kind of science gathering pod just to grab a bit of science from the surface. Uh, but the main purpose of this flight, if you've seen the last video, you will know that what we are doing is doing two missions in this flight. So the first one, which we did in the last video, was we entered into EVE's sphere of influence, which is the looking inwards mission. And the second one is going all the way out to um, ELU and uh, getting the frosty mug mission. Now, uh, the idea with this flight was that we took off from Kerbin, we came down to EVE, and then using a gravity assist from EVE, we're going to go back up to Kerbin, use another gravity assist to get up to uh, Juna, and then a couple of gravity assists around there will get us up to Jewel, which will then get us up to ELU. Um, now, you'll notice that there are two flights in progress around EVE at the minute, and this uh, probe here is the one that's going to be going to EVE, uh, sorry, ELU, whereas this one we're actually going to be sending down to Moho, because I decided that since this, uh, pro this stage of the rocket still had a fair amount of Delta V in it, then it, it, we might as well use it to actually go down to Moho and get even more science. So, if we uh, hit control on this, you can see that we still have an entire stage available to us so instead of wasting that i figured why not you know make use of it um so yeah we're going to do this one in this uh, video and then in the next video we're going to be doing the actual uh, you know the elu flight um because doing several gravity assists to try and get to elu can take a little bit of a while and it's a little bit more complicated so i wanted to do it in its own video um now I've not been very consistent, uh, consistent, should I say, with my um, you know my uploads lately because life being what it is, I've not been able to play the game much recently. So I'm actually going to try and do both of these videos in pretty quick succession. I'm hoping to get the uh, the e loom video out in the next couple of days, but like I say, we'll do this one now. It shouldn't take too long. It should only take about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, so yeah, let's get into this flight. So the first thing I'll do is I'm actually going to delete the uh, the drop pod because we don't need it anymore, and uh, we just get some annoying, you know, um, uh, alerts basically saying that it's, it's out of range of curbing and so on. So we'll get rid of that, and then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to zoom out and uh, set Moho as the target. And you can instantly see that our inclination is way out so we need to obviously fix that so the first thing we'll do then is we will warp out of Eve's sphere of influence and then once we're there you can see that the descending node and the ascending node have uh, shown up now which is saying we're at 7.7 .7 degrees relative inclination so obviously we need to bring that down to zero degrees so we'll start off by creating a maneuver on the ascending node and as I've said before, when you are approaching the ascending node, what you want to do is you want to be pulling out on the anti-normal arrow because in, in my mind, AN basically means an anti-normal burn and DN basically means a normal burn. Um, so that's just the way I, I know, um, you know which one to do best. So we'll get that down to zero degrees. And then what we'll do is we'll uh, point at the manoeuvre, warp to the manoeuvre and then perform this burn. Now, if we hit this little bar here on the right, you'll notice that it's saying that there is zero delta V in the uh, top stage and 3,000 delta V in uh, the in this stage, which is completely wrong uh, because you can see that we only have 1.6 tons of uh, CH4 and uh, 6.4 tons of oxidizer in this stage, uh, which is only going to give us about maybe 15 to 20 delta V. Um, so one issue I was having with this before this video was it was actually saying there was zero delta V in both stages which meant I was unable to actually create any maneuvers um, which obviously made that you know getting down to ELU quite difficult uh, sorry Moho and the only way I found to actually get around that was to completely replace this uh, this actual part of the rocket so what I did was I went back to the VAB I stripped the original rocket down to just this section uh, reduced the fuel in this tank so we only had one well as close to 1.6 uh, and 6.4 tons of fuel in each of the tanks and then burned the main engine while on the pad to get it down to the correct amount launched it and then um, you know using the uh, the infinite fuel cheat and then actually used the 
cheat menu to rendezvous with the original uh, stage of the original rocket because this isn't actually the stage we used in the last video like i say i've had to replace it uh, but that's just a way to get around if you find that it's saying the zero delta v in the rocket and you can't create any maneuvers if you can just replace it and then rendezvous use the cheat menu to rendezvous with the original one you'll be in the same flight path going at the same speed and so on um, and everything should be all right and it's it's not really cheating it's just a little way to get around it but if you'd like me to do a video on how to get around the issue then i can do uh, just let me know in the comments and i'll uh, i'll do that for you but anyway let's uh, get ourselves down to zero seconds on the burn timer and then actually do this burn Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to delete the manoeuvre now because we've we know we know we started at the correct time, and we're actually going to use the uh, ascending node or descending node on the map screen to make sure that we actually hit our correct um, you know inclination because it's very easy to overdo it or underdo it uh, when we are just using the burn timer. So this way, it's just a little bit easier to actually make sure we're doing the burn accurately. So yeah, there we are. So now all we need to do is actually get ourselves going down to Moho. So with this one, it's a very simple manoeuvre. We just need to create a manoeuvre anywhere on our orbit. Reduce our periapsis down towards Moho's orbit. And then once we are there, make sure we're actually getting our number two insect markers up because that way we know we're going inside of Moho's orbit and back out again. But yeah, once we're there, what we can do is we can... In fact, I'm just going to cycle through the map back to the... Uh, sorry, from the flight view to the map to get rid of all that information. What we can do is we can right-click on the manoeuvre node to bring up these buttons, grab the two arrows on the top, and just move our manoeuvre around until we actually get our encounter. There we go. So yeah, let's uh, focus on Moho. And we're going to get our periapsis all the way down to about 10 kilometers because uh, the highest point of the actual um, Moho's surface is about 7 kilometers above the surface. So if we go down to 10 kilometers, that way we know we're going to get some science from both low orbit and high orbit. And I believe Moho's uh, low orbit is actually around about, well, it starts at about 80 kilometers. Um, so if we go all the way down to 10, then that'll give us plenty of time when we're going past to actually get our, uh, you know, do all of the science, because it takes about a minute or two for the actual radiation survey to do its thing. So like I say, we'll get ourselves down to about 10 kilometers. And I'm going equatorial, but we don't really need to. As long as we're nice and low, we'll be all right. But yeah, there's 10, so all we need to do now then is make sure we are pointed at this manoeuvre. And once again, we'll perform this burn after warping to it, obviously. Right, so now that's done, let's have a look at our actual encounter. Let's see, uh, we aren't even getting an encounter at the minute, which is, uh, it seems to do that a lot for some reason. So we'll right click on either of our inset markers, we'll activate RCS and we'll use that to try and see if we can't bring ourselves down. So I'm actually pressing N at the minute to do a retrograde burn, um, even though we are pointed retrograde, we're basically burning backwards. Uh, so we're doing a prograde burn technically, but we'll use RCS anyway to get ourselves into our encounter. Then once there, we'll be able to actually manage our um, you know, periapsis until, like I say, we get down to about 10 kilometers above the surface. And now we're getting close. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the flight view and I'm going to just reduce the thrust limit to about, let's go to about 2%. And that'll just give us a little bit more fine control over our altitude adjustments. I 
did it on the wrong one, didn't I? I did it on the actual engine. So yeah, let's, let's reduce the thrust limiter down. We'll put the engine back up to 100. We are going to want to use that again. And then, like I say, we'll make sure we're going down to about 10 kilometers. Eleven will do it, and that just means that once we enter into uh, low orbit, because we are going to be travelling at quite a hell of a lick, obviously, because we're uh, on an interplanetary trajectory, um, we'll have plenty of time that way to actually do the science. Because as I said, it takes a little bit of time to do the radiation survey. But anyway, let's now warp in towards Moho. So we'll find the point at which we are entering Moho's orbit, and we know which one it is, because for one, the uh, you know if if the whole orbit is uh, is, is highlighting, that means we'd be doing a full orbit of Kerbal. Uh, so we'll make sure we're only on the one that highlights half the orbit, and then if we move it a little bit closer, you can see now that the orbit line around Moho is actually highlighting. So we'll click there, and then we'll time warp to point. This should bring us into Moho's sphere of influence, or close anyway. Uh, so where are we? Let's find the broken part of the orbit, which is there, and we'll do another time warp. There we are, now we are in Moho's sphere of influence. So, given that we're in high orbit around Moho, we'll do our first little bit of science. And bloody hell, that's a bright sun. <laughs> um, anyway, let's uh, do a manual warp, and like I said, we're going to keep an eye on our altimeter. I'm also going to make sure it's set to C, uh, so that once we are 80 kilometers above sea level, we'll know we're in low orbit around Moho, and we'll be able to do the, uh, the next uh, radiation survey. It's always a good idea to be very careful doing this because, like I say, you can very easily just fly straight past at which point we'd miss out on the uh, science. And it's not going to give us a huge amount of science, but it'll be a nice little extra amount. But now we're in low orbit, we'll hit the experiment button again, and like I say, that'll give us the uh, extra little bit of science from low orbit around Moho. Right, so now that is done, you can see we've got a nice little bit of, uh, well it's 1134, so we will transmit that to get it out of the way. And now we can have a little look at uh, Moho. Um, now there is a feature on this planet called the Moho, which I've, I'm yet to see. Um, I have no idea where it is. I do know that there is a future mission where we actually have to go and land in the Moho, so that's going to be an interesting one because it's very difficult to get into orbit around Moho. I say that, you just need a hell of a lot of Delta V, basically. Um, but yeah, so now this is done. Like I say, we can just uh, we'll walk to have a little look at Moho and see if we can't see the Moho. Which is not looking promising at the minute. I presume it's in one of the craters, but I just cannot, I've not seen it yet. Uh, but anyway, like I say now, this is pretty much done. So what I'm actually going to do is instead of leaving it where it is, I'm going to leave. I'm going to actually do another burn to bring it into an orbit around Kerbal as a kind of relay satellite. Um, now, in the last video, I think I mentioned that I was going to. I, I would have liked to have brought it down towards the sun and got even more science from low orbit around Kerbal. However, because we had such a large inclination change, it means that we only have a tiny little bit of delta V left. So we're not going to be able to do that because we would need to get ourselves down to. It's 1,000 megameters is low orbit around Kerbal, uh, which I believe is 1 million kilometers. So let's let's just quickly create the maneuver and do a retrograde burn and see how far far down we would actually get. Okay, you can see it's uh, just under 4,000 kilometers. So like I say, we need to go all the way down to 1, 000, 1 sorry, 4, 4 million. We need to go all the way down to 1 million kilometers to be able to actually uh, be into low orbit. So yeah, instead of doing that, then what we'll do is we'll do a prograde burn, and we're just going to burn it until we've used up all of the fuel. And the reason I'm doing this is to raise our periapsis up above Moho's orbit line, because this way we're not going to risk accidentally getting a, an encounter with it in the future and crashing. And as I say, it just means now that we'll be able to basically use this as a relay satellite for any future missions. So let's point this at the manoeuvre then, do this burn, and then that will be everything for this particular probe. So 
Yeah, there we go. So we can really get rid of that. You know, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to deactivate the engine since we don't need it anymore. And plus, I kind of like the way it folds up. Um, and yeah, that's everything for this particular probe. So, like I say, we'll leave this in orbit as a kind of relay satellite. Although, for the time being, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to right click on the probe core and I'm going to hit the hibernate button just to stop that using any electricity. Because even though we have, uh, you know, solar panels and batteries on board. Just this way, it means that uh, we'll always have amount, the amount of energy we need. And if we need to in the future, we can always, like I said, just re take it out of hibernation and use it as a relay satellite. But yeah, like I said, that is everything for this particular one. Um, what we're going to do then in the next video, as I mentioned, is we are going to be using... Where is it? Let's try and find our other probe. So we'll go back to EVE. Already, it's already flown out. Where is it? Ah, oh, there it is. So yeah, we're going to be using the Eve probe then to go all the way up to Moho or um, uh, Elu. Sorry. So that's going to be the next video. Uh, like I said, this is only a very short one. It's only about 15, 20 minutes long. Uh, and as I said, I'm going to try and do that video uh, in the next couple of days and get it, um, you know, get it out for you all to watch. But yeah, like I said, thank you for watching this one. It's a very simple little flight, is that? Uh, in the next one, like I say, it's going to be a relatively complicated video, so it could take a little bit of time, but um, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then obviously I would appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe and maybe even leave a comment. And hopefully I will see you in the next one.